Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me for another episode of What the Smut. Is it considered an episode if it's on YouTube and not actually a show? Because that just kind of rolls off the tongue like another episode of there's something floating in front of my face again. I don't know. It just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Like, welcome to another episode of What the Smut. I'm your host, Candace. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate you guys being here. <laughs> um, today, I will be reviewing for you guys the third installment of Cressley Cole's Game Maker series. This, this little guy. <laughs> uh, the name of this book is called The Player. This is the third and final installment in Cressley Cole's Game Maker series. I have already posted review videos for the first and second books in the series, which is The Professional and The Master. You can go find those. Don't be lazy. Just go look for it. It's like two videos down, four videos down, something like that. Okay. Um, so this is the last book in the series, and this was published in 2016. I don't think this series was ever mass market paperbacked. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I may be wrong. I just can't seem to find anything but the large, the, like the large paperbacks. Um, and those have 334 pages. So it's a good little chunky novel. It's a good little, little chode, if you will. Pause. <laughs> um, you can get this particular paperback new on Amazon right now for $12.72. The Kindle and Nook price for this book is $6.99. Uh, you can also find this book used on eBay for around $4 with free shipping, which is where I got mine from. It's like, I think it was a library book because it still has like the little sticker on it, which I don't really mind. I mean, as long as it doesn't damage the book when I take it off, watch me damage the book when I take it off. Um, if not, then I'm just going to leave it there because I know I'm going to screw that up. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you don't mind used books, like, aside from the little sticker that says this used to be a library book, it's still in, like, almost, like, new condition, and I paid, like, $4. Buy your books from eBay. Stop being bougie. You don't need to go to Barnes & Nobles. You don't need to go to... Where the fuck do you buy the books? Walmart, even. Like, they're still overpriced. Just, I mean, I get it. Like, I get the hype. You, the day of, if it's one of your authors, like, your authors, the ones that you, like, you fiend for, like, their next release, and the day of the release, you have to have that book, you're not going to find it used on eBay for, for $4. Like, I get that. And I've, I'm guilty of that, too. I've done that. Like, I've bought <laughs> a brand new novel from someplace like Barnes and Nobles or Walmart or, you know, even like downloaded the Kindle version, like immediately the second it releases, like midnight on release date and then stayed up all night and then had a book hangover the next day because you just had to read it right then. So I get it. I get it. You don't want to wait a month or whatever until the price drops and people start selling their copies on wherever you use. I understand. I will not judge you for that. I am guilty of that as well, so. Uh, but if it's been a while, obviously it's been a while since this this bad boy got released and you can get it used, so you should get it used because we're not made of money, right? I'm not. Are you? No, I don't, I don't think so. Unless you're like a millionaire or something and you somehow stumbled across my videos and if so, you should sponsor me or something because I need cash. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being ridiculous. I take that back. Uh, none of these videos are sponsored. I have no sponsors. I have like 10 viewers. Um, no one pays me to do these reviews. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this book from Cressley Cole is the, I've already said like a hundred times, it's the third installment of the Game Maker series. And this is Dimitri's story. So if you've read the first two books, you will know the first book is um, Alexander's story. Uh, he is the oldest. And then you have the master, the main character, and that one is Maxim, who's uh, Alex's younger brother, but like the middle brother. And then the third brother is Dimitri. He's the youngest. He's like some like tech genius, um, but with a really, really traumatic past. So... I will read you guys the blurb and then we can uh, discuss it 
because we need to break it down because this book exploded my brain. Okay. So the blurb for this book says in Las Vegas, Sin City, Dimitri Sebastian finds her, her, Victoria Valentine, sexy, vulnerable, and in need of a protector. Obsession takes root deep inside him. Despite a history tainted with violation and betrayal, he will stop at nothing to possess her. Descended from a long line of con artists, 24-year-old Victoria, a.k.a. Vice, needs the score of a lifetime to keep her loved ones safe. She sets her sights on gorgeous and rich Dmitri Sebastian, even as the irresistible Russian toys with her body and mind. He tempts her heart. <laughs> When Vice and her associates maneuver Dimitri into a hasty Vegas wedding, he refuses to protect himself with a prenup, trusting her with all that he has. But can she trust him? As secrets unfold, the newlyweds share days of doubts and nights of the wickedest pleasures. <laughs> Yet, once Vice discovers her husband's past, will she stay to fight for her marriage or cut her losses and run? Okay, so, essentially... Uh, Vice or Victoria Vice uh, is uh, comes from a long line of con artists and like that gypsy type people. Um, they run card scams. They do, you know, it's Vegas, so like you know they're in, they, they're into like a lot of the little cons. So um, basically, somebody comes for her parents. And she has no choice but to make a big score to get them out of debt uh, or to keep basically save their lives, keep them from being killed by whoever is coming for them. And Dimitri steps in and he's like, hey, um, you're beautiful and, you know, I want you. And so let's get married and I'm not going to have a prenup and I'll just give you anything you want. Here's a, here's a billfold full of credit cards I've already taken out in your name. Like... All like is too good to be true because it is too good to be true, but in a good way because I don't want to spoil anything. But let me just say, I absolutely loved The Professional. It was the first book in the series and it's what made me obsessed with this series. Um, the Master, I really enjoyed as well, but something about The Professional just because I guess because it was the first, it was the introductory book and Alexander is like, like, like alpha male, possessive, broody, like stare at you darkly from across the room and just like you, but you know, he's like picturing all the things he wants to do to you. Yeah. So I personally loved that one and that was probably my favorite, but this particular book in terms of plot was like, like, Oh my God, there's a twist at the end you will never see coming. Never. When I read it, I was like, what? He did what? And you what? Uh -huh. So let's just say it's a good book, okay? Dimitri is a very complicated character. Like he's a grown man now. He's rich. He's, you know, handsome and whatever. But he's very, he's, he's like a, he's like alpha male, but also like very vulnerable character. Um, he grew up in a household where, um, you know, their father physically abused them. He was an alcoholic. And then when he died, um, Maxim and Dimitri were passed on to a guardian who was supposed to take care of them. And he subsequently sexually abused Dimitri. So like now Dimitri is the, is the type of character where, uh, he, when he's with a woman, he dissociates disassociates just dis he like blanks out like he checks out of the entire experience and he like instead relives the trauma of when he was abused by the guardian so he when he sees or he meets um victoria he's enamored with her and you know he just knows in his mind that she's the one that can like keep him grounded that she's the one that's basically gonna save him and you know, because of her dire financial straits, she needs the relationship as much as he does. And, you know, eventually all the secrets come out, the the con and, and you know, his past and et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, they 
they come to terms and all of Cressley Cole's books have a happily ever after. So you don't have to worry about anything like, you know, the couple is not going to be together in the end. You know, they will, you know, they will. So, I mean, you can't, you can't not, you gotta, I say you got, you gotta. Okay. So, um, for the rating for this book, I would give it, um, a nine and a half, <laughs> just like I did with the first two in the series, because I need to leave a little bit of wiggle room for something that may come later where I'm just like, oh my God. So, um, but I would highly recommend this book. I would highly recommend this series. I can't say anything bad about this series. I really can't say anything bad about any Cressley Cole book that I've ever read. And I've read like her Regency novels. I've read paranormal romance novels. Um, this particular one is a contemporary romance. So it's set in present day. It has no witchery or fuckery or like, well, there's plenty of fuckery, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's no like supernatural whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I would definitely recommend this series to you guys. I would recommend this particular book to you guys. This will probably be a short review because every, I've kind of dropped little hints about this, this particular book in my other two reviews for the professional and the master. So I don't really have uh, a lot to say <laughs> that hasn't already been said. So, um, yeah, uh, I would recommend that you guys pick this one up. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, if you like this video and if you like me in general and you want to continue to see me review books, then please subscribe to my channel and you can like this video and you can leave me a comment if you want. I will love it. I will heart it because I'm not one of these like mega YouTube stars who has managers and has no time to like go in and review their own accounts and stuff. I literally stalk my account for views. Like just leave my browser window open and hit refresh like every couple minutes like that's me to see if I've gotten any views Send. so if you comment something I will definitely heart it unless you're being nasty and then I probably will not heart it yeah I probably won't um but if it's nice I will heart it and I will probably comment back to you because I like talking to strangers on the internet but not in a creepy way, in a normal way, in a normal smutty way. <laughs> uh, if you would like to follow me on my other social media platforms, I do have a Facebook group and I have a Twitter and an Instagram all under variations of the phrase, what the smut. <laughs> um, I will have a little banner down here uh, with the handles and I will leave links in the description box below so that you guys can just get to it quick. Um, I would really appreciate a follow. Join me in my Facebook group so that we can share ridiculous memes with each other. Uh, and yeah, please join me for my next video. I'll see you guys then. Bye, I love you so much. And I'm back with another video. My hair looks exactly the same as it did in that other video that I posted because I'm not changing it because I recorded them at the same time. Uh, and uh, you can get this particular paperback new on uh, Amazon right now for, hmm, I don't know. Am I too much? Do you guys think I'm too much? Is my personality off-putting? Is it? Is it though? I mean, <laughs> yes, it probably is. I'll stop. I'm going to stop. I'm not gonna stop. You guys may be wondering why Charlotte hasn't knock knocked today. And it's because Richard's off work today. So he's home and he is watching her and keeping her occupado. So I don't have little pitter patters bothering me every eight seconds. It's nice. Although I still have the turtles next to me who are just clomping away against the side of their tank. No respect for my craft. go for like one of those like pinup style hairdos and um I'm pretty sure it was a fail.
because <laughs> it don't look like no pinup. Uh, but you know, I don't know. It's cute. The back is a hot mess. Like I used pins to push my hair up because it, it was just like, it looked like a bowl cut kind of. Anyway, but from the front, it's not terrible. It does nothing to accentuate my face, but this is my face, so what are you going to do?